Have you ever met Ralph Nader? Of course. I've debated Ralph Nader many times. Uh, and I assume you feel that... His, what, what, what is it that troubles you about him? I think he's wrong. It, <laughs> uh, uh, I think... I think... Yeah, I don't have any doubt about his sincerity, but I think sincerity is a much overrated virtue. I think what troubles me about him is that he wants to run my life for me instead of letting me run my life. Let's just take a couple of things. If it weren't for Ralph Nader, we would still have those ornaments on the hoods of cars which impale babies and women and children crossing streets. We would still have an auto industry which is totally focused on cosmetics at the expense of sound automotive engineering. We would still have... Uh, uh, an auto, uh, we'd still have an automobile uh, business and its ancillary uh, supplier of tires with uh, difficulties that would be uh, sent out to the public without, without regard to any problem at all of being asked to account for them. You know, the pr problem with claims like that is that they don't stand up to the facts. Now, take the most famous case. You know Ralph Nader got his start by a book called Unsafe at Any Speed. It referred to the Corvair. Do you know that ten years after he launched his attack, and persuaded the public at large that the Corvair was an unsafe car. The federal government finally got around to investigating the safety of the Corvair. And its official report concluded that the Corvair was a perfectly safe car, just as safe as the alternatives available, and that Ralph Nader's claims were completely unjustified. Yeah. Why so that similarly with all of you, those extravagant claims, which I know you're not making on your own behalf, you're the devil's advocate and a very good devil too, Thank you, I think. <laughs> and a very good advocate. Thank you. <laughs> so, but the trouble Excuse with me, I just want to make this point, uh, uh, Professor Friedman. You are using the United States government, whose post office is often referred to by you in columns, in speeches, and in writings as an example of what happens when you give Absolutely. what ought to be the private enterprise's Absolutely. business to the United States right. government. Now you turn around and use this United States bureau bureaucracy to support your uh, defense of Ralph Nader. How, I mean, uh, why should I have any more confidence in the, in the government's review of the Corvair than in the government's operation of the post office? You shouldn't. I have no more confidence well, in that. Well, you certainly cited it to suggest... I beg to suge your pardon. I just have as much confidence in it as I do in Ralph Nader's evaluation. So we're evensies then? That's right. So All then I either... Then there is no evidence. No one, neither Ralph Nader nor anyone else, has ever presented any evidence right. that justifies his charges. No one has presented evidence to justify the kind of charges you're making. No. And those charges are simply untrue. It is not a fact that the world would have come to an end but for Ralph Nader. But more important... Take one of those charges that the cars would be devoted to cosmetics. If people want to spend their money on cosmetics, why shouldn't they? You mean to say you should be prohibited by the government from doing whatever you do to, have a, uh, to give a nice cosmetic image to your viewers? No, I guess I'm thinking that if we just leave it to Detroit, if we had just left it to Detroit in your own laissez-faire and you're wearing well, your Adam Smith tie today... Um, always wear it on you, TV. I know. Uh, <laughs> Let me tell you what I think. Let's just you tell me what's wrong with this. Sure. If we just, you know, tell now Ralph Nader to go somewhere sure. else and complain. Sure. And let's let Detroit and the free enterprise sure. system handle this. Here's what we would not have. We would not have collapsible steering wheels. We would not have padded dashboards. We would not have spring-loaded ornaments that bend back so that you minimize injury in the case of hitting a pedestrian. You would, uh, you would not have... I, I, I'm well, sorry. first of all, I have no reason to suppose that's true. Long before... Ralph Nader came on the picture. The automobile industry had made cars increasingly safe. Brakes had become better. The uh, protection and the bumpers had become better. The doors had become better. They, when it turned out they were defective, the automobile industry introduced them. Almost all of the developments in automobile in that direction uh, had arrived and were on the way long before Ralph Nader came along. But if you didn't have Ralph Nader, if you hadn't had that movement, you also would have cars considerably cheaper, You'd have them available to a much wider range of people. They would be using less gas than they do now, not more gas than they do now. You, after all, the thing that amazes me about people who make statements like this is their neglect to history. We, this country went for close to 200 years without a Ralph Nader and without these regulations. And that was a period in which this country had its greatest growth, in which people streamed to it from all over the world and were able to make a better life for themselves and their children. If you take the automobile industry in particular, since Henry Ford really revolutionized it, it transformed the nature of life in this country. The automobiles improved tremendously. They came down in cost relative to other goods. The effect of the, of the kind of regulations you now have, have 
has been to make automobiles not more safe, but less safe. Why? Because by making them more expensive, they make it pay to keep an old car on the road longer. The average age of cars on the road has gone up. And old cars are less safe than uh, new cars. By making them more expensive, you've reduced the amount of foreign competition. We have a lot of foreign competition, but you probably know that there are many foreign-made cars that make no attempt to export to the United States because the cost of meeting all the particular regulations and standards make it uneconomic to do so. Well, uh, uh, they certainly haven't discouraged enough uh, to make Detroit happy. Of I course, mean, but I don't want to make Detroit happy. That's not my aim. Or, I want to make, make the citizen happy. I want to make the customer happy. Right. The but, last thing in the world we want to do is to make Detroit happy. Let's just